Because I got something tonight that the nation of Israel did not have. I got a high priest that took the blood one time. And one's all it was needed. And thank God, he's forever shut down at the right hand of the Father. That's the one thing that they did not have. Think about this. That's the one thing they did not have in that Ark of the Covenant. They didn't have it in the tabernacle or in the temple. They did not have in the tabernacle or the temple a place. When you went in behind the first veil and behind the second veil, there was no place to sit down because the priest's job was never finished. But thank God Jesus, one time, one time and it forever settled the final sacrifice needed for sin. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. Thank God all he's waiting now is for the Father to say, Son, go get your bride, bring her home. Go get the children. That's right. And thank God then he'll get up. He'll step out on that same glory cloud he went up on. He'll come back. Feet ain't going to touch the earth that time. Right. He's going to call his church home. Thank God the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be changed, called yeah. up to meet the Lord in the air. And there shall we ever be with the Lord. Right, I've got something that those old Israelites did not have. Yeah, that's right. Thank God there's not a need for remembrance of sin every year. One sacrifice for sin. Made at Calvary. And that's all that's needed. Amen. My hope is in the blood. Right. Tonight, open your Bibles if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And let me, uh, let me just say this. Don't. Don't ever try to second guess and get ahead of me. Of where you think I'm going. And I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I don't know whether tonight's going to be one of them nights. Whether I'm going to preach. Whether I'm just going to teach. Or whether I'm just going to talk to you. But. You. I promise you this. With the help of the Lord you'll get the word. Either Amen. way. Amen. And if we've got that, that's that's enough. Right. That's enough. We need the word more than we need anything else. You don't need my thoughts. You need, don't need my ideas. First Corinthians chapter number eleven. And again, I, I ask you just just pray for me tonight. And I'm promising you tonight, this is not something that I'm here to. <coughs> kick anybody, make anybody mad, upset anybody. I'm not. Just pray for me tonight and don't get mad till I'm done. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 starting in verse number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse number 1. Be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we come to you again this evening, we thank you, we praise you for the day that you give us. Thank you for the way that you watched over us, you took care of us. Thank you for every need being supplied. Thank you, Lord, for the health and strength you gave us just to be able to get up and go today and and I'm thankful, Father, that now for the second time today you've allowed us to come and meet together at your house. I thank you for each one of these that's come out. I thank you for every home and family represented. Thankful, God, that we've got this time once more today to get together, to worship together, and fellowship one with another. But, God, I thank you most of all tonight for saving me. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the blood. I'm thankful tonight, Father, that he... Did it all. He left nothing out. He left nothing undone. And as that psalm said, my hope is in the blood. I'm thankful tonight for that Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world and took away the sin of Wayne. God, forgive me tonight where I failed you. Forgive me where I've come short, where I've let you down. God, anything at all between me and you that's not confessed up, please get it under the blood. I thank you, Father, for the time in the prayer room. I thank you for the songs that were sung. Bless my heart. But now, Father, it's time for the Word. It's preaching time. I pray, God, you'll help me tonight. 
I'm asking you, Father, to do what I can't do in myself. I pray, Father, tonight that you hide me behind the cross, get me out of the way, let people realize it's all about Jesus. I beg you tonight for that fresh touch and that fresh anointing from on high. I beg you tonight to take away anything that might hinder or quench the Spirit. I pray tonight, God, that you give me the words and that, Father, I'll be obedient and say only what you'd have me to say. I pray tonight, Father, most of all, that if there is anybody under the sound of my voice without Jesus, that God should get a hold of their hearts and convict their soul and they'd see that need before it's everlasting too late. Go with us now through the remainder of the service and have your way. And Father, for what you do, we'll be careful to thank you, to praise you, to give you the honor and the glory. But we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Apostle Peter wrote and made it very plainly. That the preacher is to feed the flock of God. Now, that tells me a couple of things. We know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So that tells me that what you need to be fed is the Word of God. Amen. Also tells me you're not my flock, you're His. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this one more time. This will never be, no matter how long I've been here, how long God allows me to stay here, this ain't never going to be my church. Right. It's God's. Right. Now, I'm just going to say this too. There's a lot... Mm, this will get me with some of my brethren probably. And I understand that the, the, the pastor is in a position of authority, but I've seen too many, especially in independent fundamental Baptist circles, where the pastor is not really the, the, the under-shepherd. He's more like a dictator. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Dang it. You're right. That ain't my job. Right. You said, what's your job? What does a shepherd do? A shepherd leads the flock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what this verse is saying. This verse is saying, follow me as I follow of as I'm a follower of Christ. Now, we need to understand, and you should be old enough and spiritually mature enough to know when things are ungodly and when things are not like they ought to be. So if things are happening, and, and hear what I'm saying, if things are going on that are according to Scripture, then we need to get on the train and go on. Amen. If they're going contrary, again, and I'm going to say this, and, and it's not like, an, and after the blessings from yesterday, don't pick what I'm about to say the wrong way. If it gets to the point that you're not getting the Word of God out of this pulpit. One of two things has to happen. Mm -hmm. Get a new shepherd. Yeah. Or find a new flock. Right. I mean, it's that simple. Right. I've told my wife that I hope in years to come, I hope it's not here yet, but if it gets to the point that my mind, and I'm not being funny, I'm being serious. I've told her and I've told Roger, that I hope that if the day comes, if my mind starts going around the bend just a little bit, that I've got enough comprehension left that if they tell me and say, hey, Papa, you need to sit, you need to sit down. And I hope I'll trust enough that I will. So I'm going to tell you, that's no place to bring a shame and reproach on the power of Christ. Amen. 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 <coughs> Nothing but biblical truth needs to come out of this. I, you say whatever you want to say, but I still, I still refer like some of those old preachers used to. This is still holy ground. This is a sacred desk. And this is the bread of life. Amen. The preacher needs to break it the right way. Amen. So he says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. I praise you, brethren. And ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances that I delivered them to you. And I, I told you this morning, you know, if we look, a, why a husband cannot expect his wife to be submissive to him if he is not submissive to God. It's the same way with a pastor. You can't 
expect the sheep to follow the shepherd if the shepherd's not following the chief shepherd. Right. Okay? So we're on the right page. Okay, we're on the same page anyway. So just bear with me for a few minutes. And, and I, I'm just going to... I told you a few weeks back that I had some hopes. I've been praying. That I felt like God was leading. This is not playing politics. Trust me tonight. You and I as children of God have been given something special. Paul said we keep this treasure in earthen vessels. And if you're saved, you've got the Holy Spirit of God indwelling within you. Amen. But it's not for us to keep to ourselves. Everything that we do ought to reflect Christ. Do I do it all the time? No. I fail Him just like anybody else does. But when it comes to the vision, it comes to the future of this place. This church has been here now. It is starting its 70th year. Next July, the first Sunday of July will be 70 years. If the Lord don't come back, I'm hoping that in 70 more, it's still standing strong and using the same version of Scripture. And bless your heart, singing some of the same songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just bear with me for a few minutes. You will think, well, he's preaching, he, he's beating a dead horse, this is stuff. Yeah, some of this, a lot of this you might have heard in the last few weeks, but just bear with me. Because I don't want you to think that I've totally lost my mind. I think I finally found it. And God's woke me up. Listen to me. God's woke me up. Paul said in the book of Romans, hey, it's high time we wake out of sleep for our salvation's nearer than it's ever been. Amen. And I'm afraid I've been asleep. I'm afraid what's happened is I've been like those disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. And I think just like a lot of other people here lately in the last few years may have had it just on cruise control. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you turn around and you look and you think, my Lord, what's happened? We've been asleep is what happened. Yeah. And it's high time for the shepherd to wake up because a sleeping shepherd can't lead a flock of sheep. Mm -hmm. This Thursday night we'll be going to the nursing home but next Thursday night's going to be visitation. You said, Preacher, is that even biblical after the last couple of weeks? Do we even need to talk about that? We know what the Bible says. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Yeah. Bible still tells me in 1 John chapter 1, we declare unto you that which we have heard and seen. I'm supposed to tell people what Jesus has done in my life. Yeah. I'm supposed to tell people what I've seen Jesus do and the way I've seen Jesus work. I'm supposed to declare the lost and dying Lord. I'm supposed to let my light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven because, and let them know that the only reason we have any good works at all and that there's anything good about us is because of that light that dwells within us. There's nothing good about me. I know that. The Bible tells us plainly in Romans chapter 3 that there is none good. There is none that understands. There is none that seeketh out after God. There is none righteous. No, not one. And I can say just like Paul did, I am the chiefest of sinners. But with God, what God has done for me, I have seen what He's done and I, I know what He's done. And the old song that the Blackwood Brothers had 40, 50 years ago, I was there when it happened. Mm -hmm. I know what happened because I was there. Mm -hmm. Then because I know, I'm... You see, it's one thing for somebody to tell you what they know. But when you know for yourself... Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, it's one thing for me to go up to somebody and say, let me tell you what God did for Brother Kenny. But it's another thing for me to say, hey... Let me tell you what God did for me. Yeah. I was in jail one night up at Danbury and uh, one of the deputies up there, I knew him, knew his brother. 
But that deputy said, do you think you... Oh, I was up there preaching. I, they didn't like... I was, Yo, let's, let's clarify that. I walked in and he said, you got anything in your pocket? I said, yeah. And I laid my pocket knife down. He said, it'll be here when you get back. I said, well, let, me, let me just give my keys too because I know what keys can be used for. He said, preacher, do you honestly think you're doing any good? I said, let me ask you something. I said, you don't know me. I said, but you knew your brother. You tell me what kind of difference God made in your brother's life. Amen. Amen. And that deputy, if I call his name, you'd know him. And that's why I'm oh, not. Because yeah. he's dead and gone now. And I hope, I hope he got things right with God before he left. But he just Amen. hung his head. I said, don't hang your head. I said, the same God that saved your brother and changed his life and made him a new creature, thank God can change your life the very same way. That's right, man. Amen. You say, well, preacher, you know, did it do any good? I don't know whether it did or not. But we forget too many times, and I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over, the seed's got to be planted. Right. Yeah. First Peter chapter 2, he said, We are to show forth the praises of Him who hath called you. I ought to be thanking God and making it public. Thank God for what He's done in my life. Thank God for saving me. Thank God for loving me enough to send Jesus. Thank God for the blood that He shed at Calvary. Thank God that there's an empty tomb tonight. Thank God that He went to heaven back in that glory cloud from the Mount of Olives. And thank God, one of these days, He's coming back after me. Right. Just like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Mm -hmm. Now, is it always pleasant going on visitation? No. Sometimes people get upset at you. But I'm going to keep going. And I don't care if there's two people that goes, three people that goes, or 30 men that go. Still going. Still going. As Paul said, or as David said in Psalm 40, I've not hid thy righteousness. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I want people to know, thank God for what God's done for me, He can do for anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I'll keep saying this till I die. God, is, I know I said it this morning, but God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. And that does not say I've not hid my righteousness. It says I've not hid thy righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to keep it a secret. And I'm telling you tonight, listen, I can't expect you to invite people to church if I ain't going to. Mm -hmm. I can't expect it of you. But I'll say this much. God's commanded me that that's what I'm supposed to do. Be ye followers of me, even as also I am of Christ. So I'm asking you, when it's vacation time, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let me mention this one. This coming Saturday, vacation Bible school. We're just doing it one day. Because he didn't get enough help to do it for five nights. And that's okay. I'm not going to beat you down for that. If God don't lead you to do it, I sure ain't going to beat you down for it. I'm not. I told you, this is not here to beat you down. But when it comes to vacation Bible school, and, come, and again, you hear me out before you get mad. <laughs> when it comes to vacation Bible school, when it comes to the youth activities, Hey, I'm going to do whatever I can. You say, we ain't got many. I don't care. We're going to do what we can for who we got. It thrilled my soul yesterday. And I know Miss Ivy is not here this evening. She's here this morning. But when James and Miss Ivan come running up to me and my wife and hugged us and told us we loved, they loved us. Amen. That's good. That's good. And by the same token, 
I don't know if it was Wednesday night or Sunday night when James got upset at me. <laughs> Brother Paul was talking to somebody. Brother James started over there. I ain't saying this to hurt you, buddy. I'm just being honest. Just hear me. And I said, James, come back here. He said, but I want to go. I said, no, the grown-ups are talking. You come back here. Let them talk. You stay with me. Did he get upset? Yep. He wanted to see what the grown-ups was talking about. <laughs> but me and him still buddies. Yeah. Okay? You say, well, what's the big deal on vacation Bible school and, and the youth activities and the youth group and, and, and this and that and all that? Well, Proverbs chapter 22 still says, train up a child in the way he should go. And then when he is old, he'll not depart from it. Hey, listen to me. And I don't mean this funny. I don't know what God's got in store. I'm going to pick on him since he's here. I don't know what God's got in store for him. Right. But he could be the next Billy Sunday. Amen. Come on. Amen. He could be the next B.R. Lake. And he could be the next Tony Hudson that comes up. Matter of fact, he reminds me a little bit of Tony because he's, he's going to be a big boy when he grows up. Right. You don't know what he could be. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's good, brother. You say, well, preacher, you are not to stop. Uh, no, 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 no. Train up a child in the way he should go still means yep. brag on them when they're right and say mm -mm when they're wrong. Right. right. Amen, preacher. Right. I'll do it if y'all want. Amen. And I'm thankful for what these in that youth group have accomplished and what they have learned. Now, in front of y'all, they probably won't tell it. But they some of these youngins that can give you, now you hear what I'm about to say. They put me to shame. They can tell you all the sons of Jacob. Mm -hmm. They can tell you all the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament in order. Yep. They can tell you the parables of Jesus. They can tell you the plagues of Egypt in order. That's right. You say, so what? Do you not understand that to do that you have to know what that says? That's right. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep them going. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's good, brother. You know, that's like about a year ago, and I'm going to mention this because I, I know that most of you don't know this. About a year ago, there was, there was some of these that uh, we told them because actually we thought that the, there was going to be some different things and it didn't work out. But anyway, we told them, said, if you will... There was different things for them to learn. And there was point values given to some of them. And there was, and we were told, we told them, you get so many points, we'll take you to care with it. Three or four? Three, four? We got four in here that made it. He said, what's your point? Well, I'm going to tell you what my point is. And again, this ain't, I ain't pointing no fingers and ain't getting mad at nobody. If the church don't cover it, I will. Amen. They've done the work. Thank God they learned the Word of God. Right. I'm going to reward them for it. Right. Amen, brother. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Train them up the ways they should go. You say, well, preacher, you know, my youngins was, they come to church and, and they got out of church. And, let me just tell you this. It's still there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's still there. Mm -hmm. I remember my Bible still says about an old boy in, in, in Luke chapter 15 that was in a hog pen. Yeah. But thank God he came mm -hmm. to himself right. and he remembered what it was like in the father's house yeah. and he said I'm going to go back mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to tell him I ain't worthy to be called his son. But thank God I'll be his servant. But what happened when he got back? Daddy saw him coming. That tells me daddy was waiting on him. Daddy was watching for him. Don't give up hope. Your youngins might be out of church. Your grandchildren might be out of church. There might be people in your family that's gone. Don't you give up. You just keep praying. You just keep inviting them. And thank God you look for them to come back out that driveway. And when they come down that road, you meet them. Meet them and don't look at them and say, well, I see you're back. No, look at them and say, thank God. Amen. Yeah. You're back. Right. Amen. Amen. That's good, brother. Pray of the child. What did Jesus say? Suffer. The little children I've had. Listen to me. I've had all the good suit and had youngins that was not mine and was not my grandchildren. I've been read on. I've been messed on. I've been on. He said, what'd you do? I had the suit dry clean. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Huh. And forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. You say why? Because right. we have to have the faith of a little child. Mm -hmm. Right. Roger, when he was little, trusted me way more than he should have. Mm -hmm. Quit laughing. That's why I can't keep those two girls by myself. That's right. <laughs> I was working on the roof of a house. I'm going somewhere. Just bear with me. I was working on the roof. We was living in that single wide. And I was putting tar on the seams. he come out on that back porch. I think he was four. And he said, I come up there. Well, I had a rope where I pulled the bucket of tar up. I said, all right, I'll let the rope down. I said, put it under your arms. He put it under his arms. He held on. I just pulled him up. I set him there on the edge of the trailer. I tied the rope off, and everything would have been fine, but he was kicking his feet back and forth. <laughs> we come outside and said, what is that? Now, what is he doing on that room? <laughs> he trusted, listen to me. I told you he was going somewhere. He trusted his daddy. Yep. Yeah. He trusted his daddy. Yep. When he was still in diapers, he would come running down the hall, me and lay, I'd lay on my back, I'd plant my feet right here in his stomach, pick him up and flip him. And he got to the point while he was still in diapers, he could make a... He put them Olympic gymnasts to shame. He would land on the bottom of his feet and just laugh and say, let's do it again. He trusted his daddy. Yeah. And can I tell you something tonight? We need to let them know that there's a God in heaven that they can trust the very same right. way. There's a heavenly father that they can trust just like they can trust their daddy or they can trust their grandpa to know that God's going to look out after them, take Amen. care of them. And God's best interest at heart. Right. Amen. Amen. Suffer the little children come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. We've got to have that same childlike faith. And you say, well, preacher... You know, some of them young ones, they, they ain't never going to accomplish nothing. We'll go back and read your Bible. David wasn't old enough to shave when he killed a lot. Right. right. There was a little boy by the name of Samuel that God used, and he walked up to Eli, and he said, Eli, God said he's warned you, and he's going to take your family clean out of the priesthood. He's going to kill your two sons. There's a king, boy king by the name of Josiah that got a hold of the Word of God and his heart broke. And God blessed the nation of Judah for another generation. Yep. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. And I'm going to tell you now, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll do what it takes. We have <laughs> different things that, and I know it costs the church a little money, the Bible tells us, Jesus said that we would be witnesses unto Him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We've got different things that the church uses. Some cost a little money, some don't cost anything at all. 
We do. We help East Oaks Outreach Ministry. We're on the radio five days a week, 15 minutes. That costs the church $15 a day. We go to Pioneer one time a month. And I thank God for all of you that comes when you're able to come. I really do. We have Facebook. And to have Facebook, internet costs. I don't know what it is now, 70, 80. I don't care if it's 150 a month. And I'll tell you why. She didn't know what I was going to preach tonight. She didn't know I was going to mention it. So that's okay. Mr. Neva said they were in the emergency room this morning. Well, the junior had the service on the cell phone. And a nurse standing outside the door listening to the service. Amen. I don't know whether she saved or lost. But again, seed was planted. Amen. You said, what's the point of all of this? It gets out and distributes the Word. Right. right. In one way or another, it gets the Word out. Mm. And I'm begging you, Hey, be ye followers of me as I am also of Christ. You tell him, then you can't convince me that that's wrong. That's right. You can't convince me that helping eat stokes is wrong. You can't help to convince me that going to Pioneer is wrong. Right. You can't convince me that the radio broadcast is wrong. You can't convince me that putting the service out three times a week and putting it out even on the phone for people that don't have internet. Right. You can't convince me that's wrong. Well, preacher, you ain't going to find that. Okay, well, let me just tell you this. How many letters did the Apostle Paul write? He didn't write them while he was... He didn't write to the church at Ephesus while he was at Ephesus. He wrote the letter and had it sent. He was in prison. He wrote it and had it sent. When James wrote his letter to the twelve tribes that were scattered abroad, he wasn't there amongst them. He sent it to them. When Peter wrote his two letters, he sent it to them. John was on the Isle of Patmos and Jesus himself commanded him, write to the seven churches that are in Asia. And he sent them. What do we do? Every time the phone comes on, every time Facebook starts, every time we go to on the radio station, every time we go to, to, to the Pioneer, we're getting the word out. Mm -hmm. And I had a woman come in down at the funeral home a while back, and we got to talking. She said, you're the pastor at us? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, you don't have any idea how much we appreciate what your church does for us. I don't know her from Adam's house cat. But she said she did. She kept the books. You said, what'd you tell her? I said, give God the glory. Amen. Now, let me park on Facebook just for a minute. Again, I'm not trying to be upset or upset anybody. You know, we'll get negative comments. It's like anything else. And I'm just going to say this. I'm not even going to look at the camera. Last time I said it, I looked straight at the camera. But if there are negative comments, and you got a Facebook account, you put whatever you want to on your page. But you put negative comments on the church's page. If I can't soon learn how to block them or hide them or delete them, I'm going to block you from putting them on. Amen. Okay. I had three or four agree with me. I don't care if it's a stranger, if it's somebody I've known for a hundred years. That's right. Okay. I mean, listen to me. If I'm if I'm saying something with somebody's going, and again, I'm I'm looking down. I I don't nobody think I'm looking at them. But if I'm saying something on those services. They shouldn't be on those services and shouldn't be said. Then the deacon should have already come to me. That's right. Amen. Amen. Be you followers of me, even 
as also as I am of Christ. So I guess, I guess I'm saying on that, you know, if if you don't believe that's the right thing to do, please, please, but before you before you start saying, preacher, we shouldn't be doing this and shouldn't be spending the money on that, come come and tell me why. Right. Okay. All right. Let, let me hit one more and then I'm gonna I'll quit. And this one I know is, is probably the, the touchiest, but I'm gonna say it anyway. We got a van sitting down here and we got a bus coming. Roger's got his license to drive the bus. And any of you in here can drive the van. Right. We're gonna work till we get people on. That's going to happen. You say, Preacher, that's a mighty bold statement. Well, I serve a mighty strong God. Amen. I don't, I don't think God would have put that burden. You say, how do you know it's God? Really? Do you really think the devil wants us to go invite people to church? Come on. Let's get logical on this thing. You say, but Preacher, no. Listen to me. I've prayed, I've cried, I've wept, I've begged God, I've begged Him to forgive me. God, I know that I've been asleep too long. I, I'm awake now. Help me to do what needs to be done and what's best for that church. And Psalm 126 still says, They that sow in tears mm -hmm. shall reap in joy. Mm -hmm. Amen. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed and Jesus himself told us this is precious seed mm -hmm. he that goeth forth weep and bear precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him let me tell you something folks I've seen too many families in my life that mama and daddy would say well, I ain't coming, but you can take the young. Yeah. Okay, I'll take the young. We had somebody a few years back. Now, I'm going to tell this. I'm almost done. I know there's choir practice. And this is going to be one of them nights I'm going to close about 12 times. <laughs> but he was ready to get on that bus. He said, because I think I can get at least 8 or 10 people on that van. It's 12 past your van. You don't need a CDL for the van. Somebody told him. Well, you know, I was talking to somebody in another church, and he said sometimes that when he'd go to take the youngins home, that mama and daddy wasn't there, and 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 they'd end up having to take them out to lunch to feed them and to, to do that before mom and daddy was. And they talked him out of doing it. What's your point, preacher? If I go to take them home and they ain't, mom and dad ain't there, I ain't going to set them out and leave them by themselves. Right. I'll take them somewhere and feed them dinner. Amen. Amen. So why would you do that? Am I not still in the book? Yeah. Luke chapter 14, Jesus told a parable and you know what he said. The, the governor of the house had made a big feast. He invited people and they wouldn't come. What did he tell his servant? He said, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full. He didn't say go to necessarily the rich part of town. He didn't say go far over yonder where they got manicured lawns and and plenty of money and got Cadillacs and, and, and everything parked in the driveway. He said just go out into the highways and hedges and that tells me that if there were people that were just out walking, if there was somebody that was living in a box, if there was somebody that didn't have, not to worry about how they smelled, how they was dressed, how they, now listen to what I'm saying. 
I think a child of God ought to come into the house of God dressed like a child of God and have everything covered and not have bring a shame and reproach on the way they look. Amen. But I'm going to tell you now, and you notice how I keep looking at the floor. I'm going to tell you now, somebody comes in here that ain't used to coming to church, I don't care if they stink. You hear what I'm saying? Right. I don't care how they dress. Right. I don't care if they've got all their mama's jewelry in them to where they couldn't even get through a medical medical, medical detector. That's right. You don't God don't clean fish until they get caught. Right. And too many times we want to clean them before we ever catch them. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you another. I don't care if they black, white, brown, or yellow. Right. Right. Yeah. Come on. Still got a soul. Heaven ain't going to be segregated, people. Come right. on. Amen. Well, they need to go down to, to the church that's down yonder. Why? Mm -hmm. My Bible still tells me there is one Lord, Amen. one faith, right. one baptism. One God and Father of all. And if they say by the grace, they get saved by the grace of God. It's the same blood of Christ that cleans them. Amen. Yep. Amen. You say, but preacher, what? Some of them might not be able. And if they can't, and if they ain't able, it's up to us to go get them. Used to be an old song, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. In Luke chapter 15, the first parable he tells is about that sheep. How did he get that sheep back to the fold? Mm -hmm. Carried him. Carried him! He didn't make him walk. He didn't drag him. He carried it. And ain't nobody going to look at me and tell me I'd come to church, but I ain't got a ride. That's right. Amen. Amen. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. For us to follow Christ, we've got to keep His Word, we've got to keep His doctrine. Doctrines, we got to keep his gospel. We got to get to the point, as Jesus said on the cross in Luke chapter 22, he said, Lord, not my Father, not my will, but thine be done. In 15 years, no, let's, let's go to 19, because today's my 19th anniversary here. Let's say 19 years. <laughs> I hope that in 19 more years that the only scripture that's still in use in this house of God is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Yeah. I see churches who are looking for pastors and they'll say, well, we, we're, we use King James, but we're not King James only. Well, for English-speaking people, it's the best and most accurate that's mm -hmm. out there. Why do I want to settle for second best? I would hope that in 19 years we've got the same style of music that we've got mm -hmm. now and that we're not ashamed to sing it's still the blood. We're not ashamed to sing what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. I hope we're not ashamed to stand and sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I hope we don't have a choir director in 19 years Thank God they'll stand up and, and sing some of that hill song and some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. mm -mm. And I hope in 19 years we ain't got to the point where we got to have the smoke and the lights and the. Yeah. Amen. When that happens, we cease being a house of worship. Yep. And we begin being an entertainment venue. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's not. I didn't know it. 
But I think I'm pretty certain to know that's not what Brother George Farmer had in mind when God led him to start this place. That's right. So again tonight, this is not one of those to, to kick down, to beat down, to, to say, well, you you didn't you ain't doing what I want you to do. I'm gonna take my toys and go home. No, uh -uh. That's, it's gonna be easy enough to find out whether this is the way God wants us to go. But so far when the scripture backs it up, it's hard for me to believe it's not the way God would have us to go. So how do you give an invitation to a message like this? Number one, you pray. And you say, God, you help that pastor to stay where you want him to stay. You keep that pastor on the path, God, you want him to go. God, you keep that under-shepherd in the direction you would have him headed so that if we follow Him, we're headed in the right direction too. Yeah. I mean again, and I'm not trying to be ugly, we're not going to have no dancing music here, and we're not going to have, right. you know, the, that is no place for the, for the Rockettes or people who want to be the, the, the Rockettes from New York City. This is not a place. Bless God, I think a preacher still ought to look like a preacher for that matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. My mother-in-law, God bless her. When my, I don't think they're watching this. If they are, I'm going to be in trouble. My sister-in-law and her husband go to First Baptist Church at Hillsville, Virginia. That preacher come out there and his, I don't know, sometimes I wonder if he was wearing short pants, but you know, his tank tops and his this, that, and the other. And they'd wear their sandals and their flip-flops. And, and, and I'm going, mm. and my mother-in-law would stay at home and watch us. Yep. I have a lot of sympathy for Brother Doug and Brother Kenny. Anybody sit on the front row the way I spit and slobber and carry on when I'm going, but God help me to stay. I, I'm going I'm on, I'm on to steal a phrase from him again. As Brother Tony said, may long live old time religion till mm. Jesus comes yeah. and let me keep on that old path. Yeah. The old path. Jeremiah said, get on it. And you understand that was 700 years before Jesus and they were already going contemporary then. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do tonight is God keep that preacher on the right direction. Keep that preacher on the right path. Keep that preacher headed on the right way. You say, well, preacher, you know, that might insult some preachers. Well, if that insults some preachers, then they don't need to be preaching anyhow. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all need to ask God to keep me where I need to be. And then we need to pray for each other that if the preacher's headed in the right direction, we all going to go together. Amen. Amen. How good and how pleasant it is, the psalmist said, mm -hmm. for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yeah. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, you ain't going to get away without hearing this. You done heard the blood. You done heard the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. You need to know tonight that if you leave this world without Jesus, it don't matter what direction the preacher is going, you're going to hell. Right. You cannot follow the under-shepherd if you ain't been saved by the grace of God. Because mm -hmm. one of these days there'll be a separation. You can pretend to follow me, but I'm going to heaven for you, and you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. if you don't know Jesus. That's right. But the Bible tells us and tells us very plainly that if thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
I'm going to say it again. It ain't about signing a card. It ain't about water baptism. It ain't about shaking my hand. It ain't about joining the church. Now, I'll say this. You've been saved by the grace of God. Yeah, you ought to follow Him in believer's baptism. Mm -hmm. You've been saved by the grace of God. Yeah, you ought to unite with a local church. But let me tell you something. The most important decision you're going to make is do you know Jesus as well and so Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to be back in the house. Thank you for one of these that's come out. Thank you, Father, for giving us this time and this opportunity to come and meet together again. I thank you, Lord, tonight for each one of these that's come out. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity we've had to look at a portion of your word. God, I truly pray. God, I truly pray that I said what you'd have me to say and that I said it in the right way. God, I pray tonight that I will get on that path you'd have me to go, that you would keep me as you told Joshua, that I, if I will turn, not turn to the right or to the left, you'd be with Joshua like you'd be with, like you was with Moses. And God, I beg you tonight, I want you to be with me like you were with Moses. Father, I pray tonight that the vision, the plans, the things we're trying to do, I pray God tonight that we do them for your honor and for your glory. Pray it tonight that as the seed is planted, that fruit would come. Father, just reach down. Overshadow this place. And give us tonight exactly what we need. Father, if there's anybody in this place that does not know Jesus, I pray God tonight that you touch their heart and convict their soul. Let them see that need. Let them realize without Jesus, I got no hope at all. Let them realize, Father, that if they'll come to you, You'll in no wise cast them out. Had your way. And it's an invitation for what you do. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.